then it becomes your character. Then after it becomes your character, it becomes your destiny. And that's when God is able to look at you and say, you left your first love. You left me. Where was I? Where was I in your life? Did you even have time for me? Did you even call on my name? Did you even worship me? Did you sing songs to me? In, in the midst of what you were going through, did you seek me first? Did you seek me? I said, I'll provide all everything you need. I said, I'll be, I'll be a very present help in the time of your need. Did you seek me? Or, did, or were you seeking a man? Were you seeking a woman? Were you seeking sex? Were you seeking a drug? Were you seeking alcohol? Were you seeking some type of weed or something? Were you seeking something that was something else more important than me? The Bible says if you seek ye first, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. If you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. All things. He'll never leave you. He'll provide all your needs. You don't have to be anxious for nothing because in everything in prayer and supplication, God said, I will provide it for you. If you seek me. If you just be with me. And I have people coming up to me and say, oh brother, you're blessed. This lady at the hospital saying, oh brother, you're blessed. God is blessing you. This, 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 and this. this and she, then she messed up and said, I wish my husband. And I told her, I said, if you seek God, it ain't about me. It ain't about me. If you seek God, he'll take care of you. things higher than God. Big mistake. 
A lot of people say, well, just because I don't come to church, because I can hear, I can, see, I'm a mind reader. Holy Ghost will give it to you right here. Somebody won't go, well, just because I don't come to Bible study, does that mean I, I don't love God? See, that's how the enemy starts working quick on you. Well, just because I don't come to prayer, does that mean I don't love God? See, the enemy, see, see, I hear it, I hear it. See, the Holy Ghost will show it to me. Because I don't want you to walk out of here thinking that that's what I'm saying. But love is what love does. If you really love him, you'll make a sacrifice for him. In some way, shape, form, or fashion. You can't be so corrupt in your mind that you receive this word wrong. Don't receive it wrong, saints of God. Because the very seed that God is planting right now, there's a devil that's trying to come and pluck it up and grab it right now and take it away from you. God is looking for some people, some soldiers. Do we have any soldiers in the house today? God is looking for some soldiers. These soldiers, some soldiers that are in the army of God, not on the outskirts. We ain't talking about no missionaries. We need some people that's in the army. Come on, son. In it. Ready to fight the fight of good the fight of faith. These are the times that we're in. And I come to tell you, when you serve God, the rewards are out of this world. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for them that love him. Oh, it's a beautiful place to be. Had to go up to a hospital yesterday. We prayed for a young man. He had tubes down his throat. He had, he had IVs all in his body. They were trying to, he was bleeding from the inside out. And being a person who works in a hospital and see death every day, I asked God, I said, God, make sure that I'm not numb to death. And God told me, say, you're not numb to death. It's just you have faith to realize that that ain't it. That's not death. Death is not when you see somebody pass on from here to there. That's not death. Death is when a person is separated from me. That's what he told me yesterday. And, 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 one, and, one, and the mother in law was over there just crying, crying and crying. And I told her, I said, I said, this is not death. Did he know Jesus? If he know Jesus, guess what? He's about to transition into another place. He, if he know Jesus, guess what? He's going to a place where there'll be no more weeping, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more pain. Then there's a place to go, and that's not death. But God forbid he did not know Jesus. There's a place awaiting that, a place to, where there's reaping and gnashing of teeth. That's what I say. Don't play. These are some serious, serious times. With everything that is happening in the world today, recession, poverty, all the things that's going on, saints of God, now is not the time. That's why it says there in 2 Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. Being work or needing not to be ashamed of the gospel, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Now is the time. Now is the time. Don't be slack. Don't be slack because he's coming. Jesus is coming. And he's coming for prepared people. Amen? In Bible study, we're studying this, the, the, the coming of Jesus Christ. That's what we're studying. And he says he's coming back like a thief in the night. Y'all don't know when thieves come. Somebody say, somebody say, Bible study, somebody say he come back 2012. I'm looking at him like, you don't know, he, he, he going to come just because you said that. He ain't going to come just because you said that. 2012. I don't know when he coming back, but I don't want to be caught, caught, caught doing something I ain't got no business doing. I want to be ready. 
Amen? Amen. 